say of translations that they can either be beautiful or they're faithful. You played both beautifully and faithfully. <laughs> it was actually, I have, in listening to these pieces, I have heard so many people play, I very rarely have heard anybody play so close to the text and so taking account of, uh, and there are a huge number of markings, of everything there and, and making perfect sense of it. It's very, very beautiful. <laughs> so the things, I, uh, the really the things I have to say, with very few exceptions, are not things that are incorrect, but just matters, or, or are just matters of interpretation mm -hmm. of what the text, what the text says. I, um, and it's, a, it, in some ways, I don't know if you agree, I think it's a, a difficult piece because there are quite a few subtle variations that can be, and not all of them are, it's quite clear which of these you want to. Um, I find the opening a little difficult because he writes scherzando, and the opening doesn't really sound that scherzando. Mm -hmm. So, and you play it, I think, as a kind of introductory spell that's cast. And that's perfectly possible and was very convincing. I, I tend to feel in the very opening, it's possible anyway, to play, um, to play the opening bars with a little more the feeling of the, of the scare. You, you play quite slowly and so this is setting the, the mood. Sorry, can you read? But I wonder if in the very opening, maybe because I sort of like the idea of having even in the be very beginning some sort of basic tempo mm -hmm. that relates to the tempo of the whole. I wonder if you would if all the let sorry. So one could feel the a little bit the skirt sound already from the opening. And then this this of course is still uh, unexpected, but this has a certain kind of lilt. I would, what I'd like to feel is that you can harmonize somehow the tempo of this and the tempo of that. That if this is your main tempo, uh, could you play that again? Right. You can try it again. This is this The two aspects of the of the personality of the undine, the, si the he writes scintillating and then gentle. I think the scintillating you could give more, a little sharper. <laughs> Do you think this is part of the scintillating, or part of the the D? Mm, scintillating. Yeah. I think. Um, it's also possible. This is again to try to because this is the same material expanded, and this this for me th is the is the breaking breaking of the the uh, the water drops, this tear, and then this is the character of the nymph. Rather than. Possible. I like, I like feeling that this is sort of the soft character. And then when you have this, the first time this comes, um, uh, it's Want to just try? Yeah. Be very pedantic because I think when tempts to play just the way he writes it with the slur and the dot. I think somehow characterizes this more completely.
a beautiful play. I think you have to a little bit, uh, for our sake, for the listener's sake, bring out even a little more this. The feeling of da, ba, ba, da, ba, of the of the three notes of a little bit more da, 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 that wave like motion, and I think of this uh, also. This is very easy going here, but not not to not really rush this. Have a little more time than you think. But mainly you could bring that out and sort of make it sound that despite the bass notes that you can play that whole line in one one line. That's the, that's the part that's hard because really probably should sound as much as possible as if a string group is playing this. Yeah, right. Connect, connect with the ear, you know. That's it. That's it. just small matters of detail, but of course so many things are detail. Um, if you're going to have this double uh, uh, twice as slow, here I wouldn't play quite so slow, so like that, just slightly, for a little bit foreboding, but not, not too so. This shouldn't sound together. Oh, also be for nice legato, super legato, but just the one note. I, I'm sorry, I'm super pedantic. <laughs> but Debussy has retenue and he has sede. And I find that the retenue is usually like sostenuto, the whole passage slower but not retardando. So, I mean, if it's enough, I think, if you do. So it's like a real motive. Otherwise, makes us wait for that. It gets a little bit Germanic, <laughs> I think. Not a little theatrical. That's it, we hear the syncopation. Keep, keep the, it's a very brilliant piano. I want to mention to, to everybody that Debussy loved the very soft and uh, wonderful sonorities of the uh, Blutner from that period that he owned. Uh, I believe it was a, a concert grand Blutner, and which had also sympathetic vibrating strings, had a very special sound, and was known to make velvet sounds on the piano, uh, which doesn't mean he didn't sometimes play loud, but that wasn't his specialty. But uh, so I mentioned that as a, when, when you have play that kind of crescendo without uh, too much brilliance, just, just this kind of crescendo without bearing down, you know? Uh, very good, very good. 
Uh, and then, then comes this thing in, the, in that I question, and what you did was what I, I, there's no, I don't know if there's an answer to this. Rubato a little under the movement. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point he writes, Twice as slow, so you play the. <laughs> then what movement is the question? What is it? What is it a little slower than? It just seemed to me a little unlikely. I used to play it as you did, very slow, almost like this is half tempo, half tempo the piece. But then I thought, did he really want it twice as slow and then uh, a little bit uh, slower than twice as slow? I mean, he could have. He didn't say. And the funny thing and with Debussy is that how incredibly detailed he was and how wonderfully concise and, and interested in, in every executive detail. And then sometimes he leaves whole things out, as in the famous example of the sunken cathedral, where he forgot to tell us, thinking we were intelligent enough to know, uh, that, that it actually uh, a quarter equals a half note at a certain point. And he does that in, in more than one piece. And I wondered he didn't he didn't say which movement this should be less. So I uh, you played quite slowly, and it was very beautiful, and it's perfectly possible. I tend to feel that um, that that this 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 is an interruption, and then this resumes, but a little slower than so a little slower than that. Which is a variant of the opening tempo rather than uh, the t twice as slow. But I mean, you made a very good case for it, but I feel somehow a little overbalances the piece. Mm -hmm. And myself, I like the sonority of this. It floats more than if it's slower. It Want to try it? See how you feel. Not not a six, not as a, a separate note. So, um, no, if you look. Float it over the phrase. These are long phrases. Still sounds a little separate to me. Um, if you were to play it without the other notes, would you feel the inner relation? of all these notes. Let's try, try a little bit more to keep the line so that you feel it all the way to here, just as you would do. Floating, but still holding together. That's the idea. which is that, and this is what, what comes down, uh, partly down to the piano. Uh, you have to compensate, I think, for the brilliance of the piano and the, the tendency to make it sound like that. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it very, we all have to adapt to the piano. It's our calling, I guess. <laughs> it's our curse. Can, I, I, and I think this is very important for the students. Can you make your arm boneless? Mm -hmm. can, can <laughs> And really, so, uh, sometimes it sounds a little bit, in order to soften the impact, the whole arm uh, extremely relaxed. And then, so you feel that for the most, uh, for, for me, the, you see the most common mark is 
the, the tenuto, and which I, I, you can interpret in many ways, but one of them is sink into the key softly. Show this, not by an accent, but by, by a, a tenuto feeling of pressure and Aggressive kind of touch, and then I'm sorry. Uh, the tiri. Of course, we can't really play this legato, but you can do overlapping pedal. Perhaps that's the kind of thing that was more possible on the Bruckner than than. <laughs> but I think we have to try to make the most liquid and and most flexible sound possible. I, I have a suggestion though, and, and it's that you don't go away from this too much. If you go, then you have to keep on coming back to it. Can you, st uh, it's not a matter of the hand. Can you stay here? So it's oh, is it a matter of your hand being too small? Uh, no, just look at all, it's only a matter of a fraction. Think, think that you're keeping this alive, and this, you're just accompanying here. Because this way, I, I hear the lateral motion, and here, if you can, if you can just move a little bit, get, get those notes in there somehow. Like, Try, try, stay there and just indicate the, the, the water flow. That's right. I don't know what this is. Do you have a story for this piece? <laughs> the story of Undine <laughs> when, and what happens here? <coughs> well, it's sort of when she changes from the suite to the sinister. Oh, I see. That, that's that part of the story. Well, I mean, she does that a lot. But <laughs> <laughs> for me, for me uh, she's entirely innocent, this Undine, unlike Ravel's Undine. But I, I know, I think they're coming after her to bring her back to the watery world. And I always I feel that that's this uh, they're in pursuit. Uh, the they, they even have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of sound again. What's the same? Uh, but I would I would horns the low horns. Almost as if you're back, draw, draw, that kind of like a crescendo in each note, very quietly. Again, now the horns. Draw. I would low a little more the low horns. Somewhat slower, anyway.
over there. That's beautiful, man. What do you do about this, Emmanuel? And uh, do you have a special way of dealing with that? <laughs> I, I kind of heard it. What did you think he meant? I mean, how would you, if you orchestrated, you would have to you have him going away. Um, do you do anything special, or just let the sound go, or suddenly um, let the sound go? I just let it resonate. Let, it resonate. let the piano do it for me. <laughs> but it doesn't. That's the only thing. It, what the piano will do for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, you can influence it more. I think you can. I, I think. Let me try. If you if you release the pedal and hold them, I think ideally he writes what he wants in the ideal world, and that's we are. And I'm thinking maybe it. I can, sorry, I do have to recatch. Definitely, I think he wants the feeling of doesn't bring the sonority. So, do you do, you do this? Sort of thing a lot. Uh, when you play sforzando piano, for example, you catch with the pedal. You do this. Yeah. Um, well, that's a good thing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, because uh, you know, I don't believe we can make a, uh, a note louder after we play it. Um, although people do have an argument with Peter Serkin about this, um, but I do feel that it's an important part of uh, our repertoire to change the sound suddenly or try to engineer a more, a more, uh, a, a, cha a change, a, a, a more change in the, in the sound that the piano would normally give us, you know? And so a Beethoven will write, you know, fortissimo piano on a note, so he expects something to happen and then Sforzando does also imply that it goes away faster than a normal note. And the piano, that's a problem for us. But Debussy is very... So what, uh, what you do often is just let the key up, catch, catch the vibration with the pedal so you can do that. It's not foolproof. I mean, and all kinds of dif differences. But basically, the sound is malleable somewhat malleable, and you can control it to some extent. Otherwise, it won't change. So t this is a particularly delicate instance. I, I, for me, this has a, a, a programmatic feel to it. I, I feel at this point, uh, this whole f final page, this she's, she's gone back you know, and it's closing over her. The ripples are closing over her, and this is the final. And then you have the still water after the final ripple, and then just the still water of the lake. So that has a, a meaning, I think, the way, he, the way he did it. But I would say um, that is something really to think about and, and in every repertoire, and certainly not, not just Debussy, is that what you can do with the piano. Could you try a little bit? Um, just play a play a loud chord and let keep the keep the key like that and then work it with the pedal so that you capture uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah it's ma it's malleable and the more you work with it the more you see that you can you can do things with it yeah okay thank you very much thank you. Very good.